really, how can, you, how can technology really enable people in their homes to maintain uh, their function, uh, their independence as they age? Because uh, as you may know, there's a coming age wave in our country and actually globally, whereby the year 2020 and then by the year 2050, the population over 65 is going to double and then double again. I'm sure Eric referred to some of this and that really we don't have the healthcare resources to, to deal with that, that huge population. People are going to live much longer than they live today. We don't have enough healthcare professionals to provide care for them. And people also want to live in their homes. They don't want to move into an assisted living facility or live into a senior housing facility. They want to stay in their own homes. So how can technology allow people to stay in their own homes for much longer? Um, we have a suite of technologies we call perceptive technologies. They're essentially sensors. So how do you make the environment around people um, more alive, more active, more able to support people in their homes? So some of the things that we've done uh, is instrument what we call a living lab for aging in place technology. So up in Oregon, we have about 500 homes that are part of this living lab and participants in that lab. And it's actually out in real people's homes, not in the lab in Intel, where um, we've instrumented their homes with an array of sensor technology. So these are just some examples of that. So these might be motion sensors that are just mounted on the wall that can, that can monitor activity. Um, there might be actual physical sensors that are attached to physical objects, like a walker or a cane, where you can detect how often someone's moving that device or using that device or even an object like a chair where you can tell when someone's been sitting or moving to anything like a pill <coughs> canister where you can tell how often someone's taking their medication and if they're managing their medication adherence successfully. So all of that data and information about sleep activity, we have sensors inside of the beds around computer usage, um, can be used to do something we call um, behavioral assessment. So it's through monitoring and tracking behaviors and those behaviors over time that can allow you to detect health issues that might be of concern. So an easy example of that is say someone's using the walker on a regular basis and you notice they consistently put a regular amount of pressure on it um, and then you start to notice an increased amount of pressure because they start relying on it more, right? Because maybe they have an issue with their hip or something. That can be an indicator of a fall. It's a trend you wouldn't pick up if you go to the doctor every six months or every year um, and maybe have someone do a strength and balance test. But through capturing that data consistently, you can see the standard line of data, and then you see the deviation, right? Suddenly there's that, inc or that increase in pressure that someone's using to rely on this. Then you know, oh, hey, someone's having a problem with their walking issues. You may need to bring them into the doctor. Same thing with medication. You might notice that someone's regularly taking their meds consistently at a regular time of day. Then suddenly, you're starting to see, oh, that's starting to vary. People are forgetting to take their meds on a regular basis. That could be an indicator. And actually, we found um, correlations in some of our studies between medication adherence and the onset of mild cognitive decline or even early Alzheimer's. Can I ask a question? Sure. Uh, when, when you say you might notice, is, is the intent to have these things monitored in real time or to have sort of alerts where when you deviate from it, so if, when you deviate between a certain level, then an alert goes off to let someone know, hey, check out this person's stuff. Yeah, because, yeah, both actually, okay. both. So in the case of uh, having a, an external person monitor it, right, so they're monitoring the data over time, really right. looking for these changes. Uh, um, but also in real time, for say, for example, someone's at risk for a fall. So you might actually, um, on the device itself, it may say, hey, it looks like you're putting a lot more pressure on this. We're recognizing that you probably want to sit down right now. Or maybe on someone's stairs, um, where their sensors might, might have a suggestion, hey, you should really use the handrail, right, instead of uh, just walking without use of an assistive uh, device. So it can both be real-time monitoring and real-time intervention or feedback, and also um, real-time monitoring but with um, uh, uh, asynchronous um, intervention by uh, someone else, a professional monitoring. Um, and this, this display up on the screen is just an example of the kind of activity plots that might be uh, extracted from this, da this data for a professional where, um, for instance, the different colors are different sorts of activity in the home. And each concentric circle um, represents about two weeks, so it's about two and a half months worth of data as you go out in the concentric the blue, so she usually sleeps from about, this is a real person's data, right, but anonymized. Oh, okay. um, so about 10 o'clock at night she goes to bed, she gets up at about average 6 a.m. Uh, the green indicates the kitchen, so you can oh. see she usually goes in for breakfast, right, yeah. about 6.30. Uh, and then she leaves the home, right, out of the home. This is sort of pinkish uh, display. Then you can also see that uh, certain times she's had rough nights of sleep where she gets up in the middle of the night. You see those red lines indicate that she's going into the bathroom. So, for example, if you have this data, and then we have another example of this same plot, where there's a whole bunch of red in the middle of the night. And what that actually indicated was that she was having an issue with the medication she was taking, and it was causing her to get up frequently in the middle of the night. 
something she wasn't very aware of because it was the middle of the night, so she wasn't thinking about it, but this data showed very clearly. So we, we were actually able to get that data back to her doctor so she could change, they could change the medication she was on so it wouldn't upset her sleep so much. So, I mean, the really the basic premise of this is, is you know, through monitoring um, behavior continuously over time, it can really provide insight on um, uh, medical issues that people may have that you can't really capture any other way. Uh, so we're trying to you know, build a suite of technologies and, and, uh, that really support people in using these technologies actively uh, in their home to, to support aging in place.